So, what is the difference between an audio interface and a mixer? And what are the situations where I would want to use one or the other? So, predominantly, an audio interface uh, is a device that converts audio from an analog, like a real world signal, into a digital signal, uh, which is something you can use and edit and process and share on your computer. Uh, and a mixer is typically uh, all sort of analog um, device that gets several um, streams of audio, could be from a few microphones, could be from a keyboard and a guitar, um, and mixes them down into normally just two channels. It can do more than that, of course, but that's the fundamental difference. It doesn't typically um, have to be a, a, a an interface, so it doesn't convert things to digital signals, um, typically. Um, but that's the, that's the fundamental difference between the two. Mixer mixes down several audio streams into sort of just a stereo mix, which is something useful because we've got two ears. And then a uh, interface is um, yeah, it's a converter. So when I see like pictures of amazing recording studios, I see that they've got a mixer. Then if you're saying to record at home, people are telling me I should have an audio interface. Well, how does that make sense? It doesn't, should I surely, I should still have a mixer, right? Well, so yeah, traditionally, whenever you saw a, a recording studio, there would be these fantastic great big mixers with loads of channel strips on them. And um, that would be... Uh, the, I mean, where it started is you would have all of your instruments that you're recording uh, going through this mixer. Um, you would make each channel sound nice, maybe add some light effects or some sort of tonal shifts to fit whatever you're recording. Uh, your mixer would then mix all of that down into just two channels. And then right at the beginning, those two channels would just be committed and recorded straight to tape. Um, and that would be your um that would be your recording of course things over time have moved on a bit now and um particularly with like the digital recording revolution uh that you can now work with each of those tracks individually in a computer and then when you're ready and you've finished sort of changing them in the in the in the project in the software uh, you can then commit them and record them down to just a stereo mix yeah so that's the that's where the sort of uh, j journey has come from, I guess, from mixer to audio interface. And so you're saying we do basically the same thing, except that are you saying that with an audio interface, you would do effectively the same thing, recording one channel one by one by one by one, and then creating a flat stereo mix out of it? Or if you had a mixer, you'd be doing the same thing. If you had a whole band, you'd be recording them all at once and then collapsing them down to a stereo so yeah, with a mixer, you might want to uh, record several things, a whole band at once, just down to a stereo file or a mix. Um, whereas with an interface, like an interface with just a couple of inputs, you could record everything one at a time and then stack them until you've got like a big project and uh, sort of yeah work on each track individually. And so I suppose I'm still kind of left thinking, well, both of those sound similar, you know, like... Which one should I get? Is sort of. It's, I know it's a silly question, but like, who who should get either of these things, or should I get both, or what? I think if um, I'd, certainly they can work together, um, but I think if if you're interested in recording onto a computer and ultimately ending up with a digital file, which is how we really most of us consume music now, and sort of sharing that online, an audio interface is critical because that's ultimately how a audio signal ends up in your computer. So that's the job of the audio interface. Um, there is still a place for a mixer in that uh, example as well, um, because mixers can be used um, to sort of like convert a bunch of signals down into um, just two channels um, with uh, some nice sort of effects or, or tonal shifts on there as well. But uh, I think more commonly now, you'll see mixers used in a live setting or a live scenario um, where we're not actually too concerned about going through a computer. We just want it going through to two big speakers at the front where everyone can uh, enjoy it. So can you paint a few different examples of different recording scenarios where you may want to have a mixer and an audio interface or one or the other? Like We understand like in a live situation we'll probably use a mixer, but what are the other sort of scenarios? 
An example where you would perhaps use them together would be if you've got a mixing desk that adds a lot of character and a, a sound that you really, really like, and you want to capture that sound in your computer. Um, you would maybe have the mixer with everything connected to it, and then that going into an audio interface, and then that going into your computer. There are, though, plenty of audio interfaces with lots of inputs as well, and you can effectively kind of treat them a bit like a mixer um, in that you could have you know, like eight or 16 uh, things connected to your audio interface at once, uh, but then work with those channels in your um, in your software and your computer all individually as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a use case for mixer into an audio interface. And then there's in the same example, you could also, uh, sorry, yeah. And then there's also an example for an audio interface um, on its own with because a bunch of stuff connected. I'm thinking if you had a studio that was full of more equipment than you had inputs for on your audio interface, you know, I've got 16 things, but I've only got two inputs on my Focusrite Scarlet, then I could use a mixer to have all of those available at the same time, presumably, and you, and record, you know, one at a time, but not have to be patching things. Absolutely. I, I yeah. suppose just to throw a, the cat among the pigeons, there is also this thing called a patch bay, right? And I've heard that patch bay can be used a bit like we were saying with the mixer, right? Where you could have lots of things available and then plug them into just two things. Is that right? Or how would it, what can a patch bay do in this situation? Because it feels like it sounds like a mixer. Um, the slight difference with a patch bay is that you can kind of have all of your, uh, yeah, all of your instruments and your microphones plugged in, uh, and then all really easily accessible in, in one place. Um, and, uh, you can, you can send, um, those audio streams and signals, uh, to, to anywhere you want, really, whatever depends on what's connected to it. It could be like speakers. It could be an audio interface could be a mixer. Um, you can plug anything into anything from a patch bay and uh, ultimately end up with that in your audio interface and then record that into your computer. So you're, you could have all of the outputs of your gear at the top and then like at the bottom, you could have the inputs to your audio interface all in this one little like space so you could connect them one at a time. And that would sort of be like what was happening with the mixer, right? But it wouldn't, the difference is that you couldn't have them all on at the same time. You could only have two of them or one of them connected depending on how many inputs you had on your interface. That's right, yeah. Yeah, so they just could be a good way of making those available. Just to make things even more confusing, <laughs> I have seen that you can get mixers that have a built-in audio interface. Can you explain the sort of limitations or the benefits of that? When, when would I want to use, would I want to get one of those then instead? You know, like this one has got a built-in audio interface. What are the limitations of that? When would I want to use an audio interface instead of that? Yeah, so in that example, if a mixer has an audio interface built in, then, um, yeah, you'll have all the all the things connected to that mixer going through the mixer's levels, tonal settings, and then um, ultimately travels into your computer where you can record it. Um, probably it's just like a stereo is like a, as a stereo um, file. I think so. And especially in the case of this, I think it is just a stereo file that it can record to the computer. That's right. Yes. Whereas um, uh, another use case, um, p potentially with a lot more flexibility and, and control, is where you've got an audio interface that has a lot of inputs on it. Um, so you can connect just as many things as you would connect to a mixer, uh, but then it will pr pass those audio channels onto your computer with... Um, like each one individually available in your software. So then if you didn't like what the guitarist was playing, for example, you could just sort of re-record that or or turn it down. Um, and Sorry, it's, guitarist. <laughs> it's not committed uh, to the single stereo file that you've, that you've brought in. Um, okay, that yeah. is a really important difference. So the, the, it's likely, I, I understand there are some mixes that can record multi-tracks, which is what we're describing, but those are very much less common than ones, the ones that will have audio interfaces in will likely be just stereo recording. And, and what you just said was that you, with an audio interface with multiple inputs, you can record each of those with separation. So that after the fact, you've still got all the individual channels and you could turn them down, redo them, yeah. 
or turn them up, you know, they may be perfect. Yeah, and you do all of your mixing in the software. In that and, yes, and you do it in the software, whereas a mixer would demand that you do it then and there, you get the most perfect take. So yes, it's, it'll yeah. be less forgiving in that way. Um, but I think to sum up, um, from what I understand, is that the majority of home recordists will use audio interfaces because they will predominantly be working in smaller groups, maybe just by themselves, and will record things one at a time in multiple passes. Um, or they may get some friends together or a band in a room, and they might have an audio interface with eight inputs, and they may record the band that way. But we're saying that a mixer will most likely not give us that separation, won't give us those eight channels, but it will give us the flexibility of doing it live in the room. And so for a live scenario where that band is on stage, then that band is going to get mixed then and there, right? And everyone will hear the result with, you know, nicely mixed down together. So I think, yeah, that's, hopefully that's answered the question, right? I mean, it's, it's actually tricky. There's quite a lot of situations where you might want to use one or the other. It's not a super clear cut thing. I yeah. Say. Yeah. Of course. Or use them together. It's, um, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, there's also the fun, especially in the world of electronic music, there's a lot to be said for, um, just using mixers as a kind of performance tool as well as this whole thing of having a drum machine and a few synthesizers and mixing them in the mixer and, and creating a stereo file as a performance. And that if you get it wrong, you do it again, sort of thing. And yes, yeah, you're committed. You can't yeah. go back and same. Like, yeah. If you were really, really like, what's the word? Just a tight band, you'd be like, we we've got the songs so well done that we don't need separation. We're just going to record them one take wonders and and do that. Good enough for the Beatles, yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How hard can it be? <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you found that useful. Um, leave a question if you have a question. Hopefully we've covered most things, but I'm sure we forgot about some things or didn't consider other use cases. So if you have thoughts, leave them below. We'll put links to gear below as well. This is the Focusrite Scarlet. This was Alex from Focusrite, um, maker of the Scarlet, one of the best, or if not the best selling audio interfaces in the world, yeah. um, giving us this insight. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Subscribe for more and we'll see you next time.